Joining me now for an in-depth look at the war between Israel and Hamas and the latest step being taken by the Secretary General of the United Nations is President Emeritus Corporate Council of, um, on Africa, Stephen Hayes. Good to have you join us. Good morning. It's good to see you again. Now, um, this is more or less um, the UN chief pushing the panic button and it's the first time he's doing so since taking office in 2017. How necessary was this I mean, the context of what's going on in Gaza. Well, I think it's essential. Uh, I think I think it was a good move. He's being condemned by Israel. U.S. hasn't made its position clear yet. But uh, the fact is that uh, people are dying in great numbers, and it, it is becoming a humanitarian crisis. In fact, it already has become a humanitarian crisis. When about two-thirds of the people killed are women and children, uh, the the confirmed number of deaths have exceeded 15,000. I've heard uh, that uh, this could move to 75,000 over time uh, within the next month or two. So it clearly was absolutely necessary to make that call. Well, some members of the council have also expressed support for humanitarian ceasefire, uh, but the U.S. is opposed to it. It has said um, it only benefits Hamas. The U.S. is a vital leading member of the council. So how is the vote likely to go? Well, I uh, don't know. I, I think you'd have to say that uh, the U.S. is likely to continue its support of Israel, but it also could abstain, which would also send a strong signal that uh, something needs to be done, that the Israelis need to, to uh, change posture somewhat. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, I would I would guess personally that they'll probably continue the support of Israel, but they could abstain. But with election com uh, campaigns are already start started in the U.S., will the Biden administration um, want to take the risk of going of going against Israel um, when if, if that vote arises? Well, no, no U.S. administration would probably go against Israel at any given time. Uh, I think that, that though it's less of a risk now because there's a growing concern in the United States of what's happening with the, uh, with the women and children and with the civilian population. But uh, again, I think uh, certainly Biden will uh, calculate that carefully. If he does with, uh, he won't withdraw, but if he lessens support of Israel, then he's going to be heavily criticized by the, the Republicans, but at the same time, the Republicans are holding off the funding for Israel because of the uh, inner workings of Congress. So it's, uh, it's all a very complex puzzle right now. I think it's likely that Biden, and almost certain, frankly, that he will continue the support of Israel, but how strongly, strongly and how diplomatically that's expressed will be key. There has been widespread criticism of how Israel is prosecuting its war on Hamas, uh, but Israel has continued to insist that Hamas started the war and took its citizens hostage. Where should the tougher language go, and, and who should bear responsibility for what's going on now in Gaza? Well, the, the responsibility is on both sides, but the responsibility for starting the war, of course, is Hamas. Uh, you can argue the reasons for that, so forth, but Hamas clearly started the war uh, they broke the ceasefire, uh, and Israel was ready to move on that. Now, who, ha who bears the responsibility for the civilian deaths? Uh, clearly both sides. Hamas has, has kept the uh, population uh, fairly, uh, I guess I wouldn't say in prison, but has oppressed the population for a long time. No elections have been allowed since 2006-2007. Uh, on the other hand, Israeli uh, bombings are killing in, indiscriminately. Uh, there's a talk about targeted bombings, but the, the area, the space that is supposedly the no, uh, no, no attack zones are, are shrinking. So uh, all sides respond, bear responsibility, as they often do in a war. Uh, it's, it's, I think both sides need to be condemned on this to, to some extent. But just in terms of his collective approach and strategy in Gaza, has um, has for that's Israel? Has it has Israel has there been any significant result out of that when you look at what's going on um, with the Israeli strategy in in that region? It, it's hard it's hard to say because uh, of the, you know the Israeli intelligence that may or may not be working as to how effective it is in eliminating Hamas leadership. Uh, I. I 
find it difficult to imagine that Hamas would be eliminated entirely. There would be something else coming up in its form. Uh, I think that uh, you've got to look at other other solutions. And I, ultimately, I, I still think that the two-state solution is the only only solution. But uh, Netanyahu is very strongly against that. Uh, I think he would prefer to drive all the Palestinians out. The attacks on the West Bank have increased as well, uh, as has resistance. So I, I think it's going to be a very, very difficult uh, problem to, to resolve uh, unless the U.S. Uh, takes a little stronger stance. But then the question is how much pressure uh, would be effective on Israel. And there has been more than enough condemnation and blame going round. But you've mentioned the two-state solution, which you know almost every country agrees that you know it's it is a solution. But there has been no political will um, to actually make that happen. And I just wanted to ask, you know, even with the devastation in in the in between Israel and Gaza, whether it's in Israel or, or in Palestine, whether this war itself presents another opportunity. Um, to make or to put that back on the t table and ensure that it happens. Well, I, I think it does. I think definitely does. It's. I think people are the, the region's tired of it. The United States is tired of dealing with the issue as well. They've they've been fairly uh, apathetic, frankly. On the, they've certainly say say the right things about the two state solution, but they've done very little on that, including failing to recognize. Uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority officially, so it, it's been um, it's been a difficult way, but I think it clearly puts the two-state solution back on the table. Uh, it uh, ironically, I think, has strengthened U.S. stance in the, in the Middle East. I think they had a very weak position starting this war, but they've they and Qatar have have uh, risen to be more effective interlocutors in this. Now, whether that can continue remains to be seen. We'll see how things um, play out and progress in that region. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, always a pleasure. Stephen Hayes, the um, chairman, emeritus, sorry, president emeritus, rather, Corporate Council of Africa. Thank you, and always an honor. Thank you.